Hey, hey. What's happening? Yeah, for some fun in the sun. Check it out. Let's get in the water. We got seagulls, sandpipers. Clams and oysters. All here in the Ipswich Bay, Massachusetts. Let's go. Hi, I'm Captain Rick. On today's adventure, we're going oystering. One of my favorite things to do. And to do with it, we're gonna, we have three things we're gonna be using. Overall boots, they go all the way up past your chest and all that stuff. Got my nylon bag to put the oysters in with a propylene rope. And I got my homemade oyster rake. Most people spend 80 to $100. Got me my $5 rake. Rakes as best as anybody else. All right, you ready? Let's go out there and go see what we can get. What we're doing is we're looking for this stuff. I can get 30 of these ones. I can get as many of these ones as I caught. These are different kind of oysters. These are kind of scallop oysters. So you can take as many as you want with these. The other ones you can only get a few, like 30 of them. If you can see all the, the next year's oysters are actually starting inside there. That's kind of a good thing. These are a really good one right there also. All right, here look, we've got another big pile. This is gonna be tasty. This is what we're looking for. These ones are too small. And plus, see inside here, that's what the green crabs have eaten and all that stuff. They're a big nuisance. These ones are too small. This is a scallop one. Almost ready. Next year's ones, these shells and over here. And it's also good what we do is we throw the old shells in here, and within a year or two, they'll uh, come back around. So I gotta go out deeper and get some more stuff. Best thing about the oysters, they filter the water. Each oyster will filter 50 gallons a day. That's incredible. The best part about all this though, they're delicious. nuisance we have around here is a green crab infestation. Supposedly they came from China. They were in some bilge. They've been working their way down from Canada for a few years. They just devastate everything because they don't have any natural enemies. Another good one. All right, just about got my fill. And I do have a license to do this, <laughs> which is kind of Good. All right, last rake. Look at this. Let me see what we got. It's a good pile. It's about what I can get. I have close to 30. Don't want to get a ticket. I'm going to give them a quick rinse off this way here. Then we'll go clean them and cook them. We're back again with the second part of the oyster thing. It's, this is kind of, this is the work part of what's going on. What it is is we have to clean these puppies up and get them ready to cook them. So what I'm gonna do is, we, this, is a, this is the tools we have. A hammer and a screwdriver. Uh, what I need to do, because these things are so fresh, it's really tough to open them up. I gotta kind of persuade them a little bit. So that's why I have this little flat rocky, and I usually give them a, a little snack, find a hole, Sometimes find a hole, sometimes find a hole, and just pop them like that. So here we go. Get this stuff in here, that's good. And 
uh, another good thing. And go to the next one. Look at this nice big one right here. We'll try this puppy. Try it without the smashing first. Oh, gonna be good. But I'm probably gonna have to smash it. A little persuader. Get it in there. Look at that. There you go. That nice, big, beautiful thing. Look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? Delicious. All right, I'm going to keep going and cracking these puppies. All right, look at that. That's wonderful. And we'll wash them puppies up in a minute. Well, I mean, these are just good looking oysters too. Now most of the oysters, the kind of, one of the reasons why people like them so much is because they got a lot of zinc in them. Zinc is really good for you. Good for your heart, your liver, especially your liver. It has a lot of antioxidants in oysters also, which is kind of neat. Not a lot of people know that stuff. So we'll give you facts at the same time when we eat which is a good thing. And also, when I'm done with the shells, I gotta go put them back where I uh, got them, because in two years, we'll be able to uh, rake them back out and get some more uh, oysters out of them, which is kind of a cool thing to do. Kind of replenish uh, what's going on. That way there, other generations and other people can enjoy this down the road. So I'm gonna Get that one. The little ones are easier to open because they're just smaller. So. And when we get all these over here, then we'll just go and uh, we'll fry them up. It's just kind of a nice thing. Other good things, oysters on the half shell are also really good also. But I like cooking them. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is scrumptious. <laughs> and the last one for this batch. Right here. Come on, surrender. Beautiful. All right, I need to wipe my hands. And then we'll show you what we got. We got this right here. We're gonna go rinse these in the house and then mix up our batch. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Well, now that I got the oysters all shucked up, we're gonna kind of make a batch with my friend, Captain Paul, the Chef Valcor, host of Grumpy Old Men. Cooking. Cooking, that's yeah, right. Yeah, we don't want to get sued by uh, right, hey. Jack Lemon and those guys. <laughs> so what we're gonna to do today, we'll be, Paul's gonna teach us about your um, raw oyster dish, what's that one called? Well, no, it's not a raw oyster, it's just, it's an accompaniment to raw oysters that most of the people in America have their oysters on the half shell with cocktail sauce. Right, of course, yeah. Now, yeah. if you ordered cocktail sauce in France, they would probably ask you politely, or maybe not so politely, to leave the <laughs> restaurant, all right? And what they frequently do is serve it with something called sauce mignonette. Oh, okay. And the idea is it doesn't cover the flavor of the oyster as cocktail sauce does. I right, mean, yeah. I do like cocktail oh, sauce. Me too, but, yes. but so I'm gonna make you a little sauce mignonette. Okay. But um, we're gonna open a couple of oysters. All right, cool. And you got your, this kind of cool oyster so, uh, little thingy. That's yes. pretty neat. This is from Maryland. Everybody has their own little unique way of uh, opening oysters. Yeah, you I use, use a, a hammer, hammer and a screwdriver. screwdriver. Right, so if yeah. you're a carpenter, you can do it. Right, so, well, they're fresh. They don't I know some surrender. people, they put it into uh, uh, Freezes, people do that, refrigerator. It freezes, some people put it in an oven for like 40 or 50 yeah, seconds. Huh. This though, not bad. Cool. Now, now don't cut yourself and stab yourself, all right? <laughs> it's you just... want me to get a hammer so you can loosen them up? Oh, look at that! <laughs> you uh, put the fat side, the rounded side, down to the little gizmo. Mm -hmm. Cut all that abductor muscle. Oh, oh no, 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 I'm gonna leave this in the hash shell. Oh, okay, all right. Go right over here then. Nice. Yeah, I won't do that like we do on Grumpy Old Men. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's relatively easy. The key is obviously you gotta get that little hinge going in there. Right. And that's it. Once you get that, you're home free. Oh, I cool. 
Then you have the second little knife to cut around it so you don't get Yeah, a little longer. Right. Ooh, you don't want to, that's goody stuff. You don't want yeah, to yeah. use that. Okay, I'll take that. Once they get you weaned off your screwdriver and knife. Right. <laughs> All right, sauce mignonette. Sometimes they make it at home with just red wine vinegar, ground pepper, and shallots. Mm -hmm. If you can't find shallots, you can get them now in any supermarket, but if for some reason you're short of them, you can use red onion. Cool. This is a little bit more elegant. Ah, sophisticated. Okay. All right, All right. Up -town? <laughs> yeah, up to, upscale, upscale. All right, so I'm gonna, I've already chopped some shallots. Cool. If you've ever watched Grumpy Old Men cooking, sometimes we're a little uh, less than specific on of course, the amounts. Have to be. Okay, so I'm going to say this is a quarter of a cup. Isn't that the old you Julie Child method? Yeah, yeah. All right, but okay. we don't throw chickens in the trash. I'll cut your fingers off. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, now you, listen. Oh, you do. So white vinegar. Right. And I'm going to add some rice wine vinegar. Ooh. Rice vinegar. But I want to caution you on something. This is unseasoned. Ooh. And a lot of times you buy this and it's seasoned. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that is if you season rice vinegar, you're not going to add salt and sugar okay, as right. I'm doing, I okay? Right. So I bought the pure version, half a cup. There you go. Wait a minute, you it <laughs> This is a little sugar. Cool. What do you want, um, a teaspoon? Half a teaspoon. Okay. Kosher salt. Cool. Half a teaspoon with that? Yeah. All right, good. I'm going to add some more shallots. Oh, okay. Float those puppies in there. Now, if you can find it, use uh, white peppercorns. Okay. These are a blend. Oh, nice. Red, white, and black. Blackies. A generous amount. Keep going. Keep going. All right, nice That's tasting. That's a nice, uh, nice. Cool. And that's it. Now, best, the best thing to do is to let this sit for about four hours. Okay. Click, click, uh, click, click But no, click, we'll, click. no, we'll be drinking too much wine. If that. So, <laughs> yeah. It improves it a little bit better because it, it, it gets the flavor melded with the shallots, okay? Right. But it's perfectly good right now. Cool. You want to try it now? Yeah, of course. You have a teaspoon one? or something? Yes, I got What, they got a little pepper in there? Yeah. That's what kind of bit me a little bit. Well, that's wonderful. Isn't it better than a cocktail sauce? I actually like that better than a cocktail sauce. Darn right, man. Go to France, you'll be all set. Cool. All right, let me Cut grab this. Got your nose this. running with that. Well, that's just <laughs> the way it is sometimes. Let me grab this stuff. Yeah. We're going to stop the water. All right. So we're just going to distribute these little oysters that I already shucked earlier. Out in the backyard with a little bowl. That you raked. Oh, yeah. Just dial these puppies right up. Oh, I like that. Heavy on everything, so what we're gonna do next, we have a little bit of, uh, you wanna help me out, put some red onion and regular white on it that's ground up. Gonna mix it around a little bit, a little bit there. Hmm. Nice. And then, if you wanna put some garlic on, Ooh. I'm gonna grab the, um, Parmesan cheese. Oh, I like garlic too, so you can- I like garlic. You can be strong fuente with the garlic. Maybe we shouldn't mention this, but uh, it is uh, around Halloween time here in New England, and garlic keeps the witches away. Oh, of course, right. We'll be all set now there for trick or treating. So put in some cooked spinach on top. I hope you didn't mind putting you, some- You wash your oil. hands, right? Oh, I did all yeah. <laughs> If you want to bury, that, bury some pernol around that, it'd be kind of nice. Ooh. Don't forget to tip your stubby toe. I love that oh, aroma. Black licorice. Ooh. Not to be confused with the stuff that Hemingway and the boys used to drink. What was that? I can't remember. Uzo. No, they used to drink a thing, and there was a, 
uh, distilled with a worm egg in it. Oh, I don't know. It supposedly would rot your brain. Mezcal? Like no, that? it began with a P. Oh. That's oh. what happens when you get old. You become a grumpy old man coach and you <laughs> your mind goes on you. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is a great that. aperitif, by the way, before yep. a meal. Nice. Okay, so now I'm going to take these and pop cool. them into the oven. Catching it. Yeah. Here, Captain Rex places a rocket Oh, wow. Oh, my man. That was wonderful. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Love ya. Bye bye.